Welcome to our channel Top Reddit Story make sure to subscribe our channel and leave a comment down below saying I subscribed, and we will try our hardest to reply your comment. People who have visited the US, what is your WTF America story? I went to Applebee's, mistake no one I guess, I was then served by a nice young lady called Brittany who asked me with a serious face if we have trees in Scotland. Not mine. But someone posted a while back about his British boss getting pulled over for speeding. As is the tradition in England. He got out of the car to meet the police officer and it went about as well as you'd expect. Edit, you minute just found it for us. Well. I hadn't even arrived yet in the US but in the plane as a foreigner you have to fill a paper to enter the country with various questions among which did you come to med dare the president of the United States. WTF America. When I went to the US. The first time and ordered a meal from Burger King. Ordering a large fry. Coke. And a Whopper. I was blown away by the size of it all. Each item was larger than the same item back home. I was already like WTF. But then the cashier said I could have a second Whopper for $1. Again. I was like WTF. Sign me up. Another time. While I was in Daytona. I went to a restaurant and the woman kept refilling my drink. Again and again. Being a bit shy. I did not tell her to stop. And expected a bill with $15 for sodas. But then I found out the refills were free. WTF? Free refills? I'd only seen that at places like Subway. But so many restaurants in the US. Had free refills. I love the US. For restaurants and food in general. The portions are massive and very reasonably priced. Australian here. I went to Houston last year and spoke to a girl my age in the airport. We got chatting about uni college. It was around July, and she asked me if I was on my summer vacation. I casually explained I was on my winter break. She was genuinely confused and did not understand how it was summer in the US but winter in Australia. I tried to explain but eventually gave up. Edit, grammar and spelling. I'm from Canada and went to CC's Pizza in Florida. Holy sheet $5 for an all you can eat buffet which was basically a fast piss to witness a sheet ton of gluttony that was on another level. I'm from America. And I have a friend from Australia. It amazes him that there are so many flags. Everywhere. Apparently that is a distinct USA thing. He'll make jokes about how we all forget where we are. French ex exchange teenager in Cali here. Summer 97. I was young and missed the field trip bus to Disneyland from San Diego. So I did something pretty stupid. I hitchhiked to go there by myself. Dude who took me looked like a plain cloth cops. But a good buddy. When he heard I was French he told me to never ever hitchhike in USA because it's pretty dangerous. Plus people could assume I'm a serial crawler. So I boasted look at you you don't think I'm a serial crawler. I'm not that dangerous looking or you are careless. He told me to open the glove a box in front of me, there was a supposedly loaded, ducking desert eagle inside. He dropped me at the bus station and insisted to give me $10 for ticket, I had cash, and waited for me to go in the bus. TL, DR, still don't know if plain cloth angel or zodiac crella. I had to tip an ATM. When I first moved to America one of the first things I saw after leaving JFK was a homeless man masturbating outside of Union Station. It wouldn't have been that strange. Except I had heard a lot of things about Nick from people who had been there, or knew someone who knew someone. ETC, and I was worried what I was seeing was just going to be an everyday. Everywhere thing all throughout the country. It depends on where you go. Cities that are large and high traffic tend to have a lot of volunteers who freelance. Mid-sized cities with substantially lower numbers of visitors per month often have a tourist bureau employing enough masturbators to provide auxiliary services. If you want. You can go to Orlando or Lubbock and get a personal assistant who will whack it while showing you the sights or even carry your shopping bags, one-handed. Those gaps in your toilet stall doors. What are they even for? Edit, to clarify. 
I meant the gaps in the sides of the door. Not the bottom. Peeking. Aussie here. When I started chatting to the cashier she squealed and asked where I was from. I told her Australia and she instantly dumped down how she spoke. Do you all speak English down there? I replied sporadically. She laughed and informed me that wasn't a word. Korean friend who just got off the plane in Atlanta. So many big fat black women. Yes. He said it loudly and in public. But my favorite was a Japanese fellow who went to a buffet with a group of us in Vegas. He sits down and his plate looks like a normal little meal. We all have heaps of sheet all over ours. And his eyes bug out that we have so much food. I said he's really going to freak out when he realizes this is only our first plate. Me paying at gas station. Attendant is I have an accent. Smiles at me. You speak English so well. Thanks. Although I should do, I'm from England. Q confused look. Wait. They? She trailed off speak, English, there? Her colleague stared at her in open mouth disbelief and then broke out laughing with the other customers. She looked mortified. To be fair I felt terrible for her. She was only trying to be friendly to foreigner. How spread out everything is. Like. It's pretty much impossible for me to survive without a car. While everywhere I needed to go on a regular basis back in London was in a 10 minute biking distance. Also. The number of pickup trucks people own without needing. Edit. Holy upvotes. Edit 2. It has come to my attention that the city I live in. Jacksonville. Florida. Is the widest city in the 48 contiguous states of the US. With a population of just under 1 million. That explains a lot. Do you have cell phones in Norway? This was in 2012. Kids nowadays get an iPhone and or iPad before they are born. Must be very painful for the mother. I was 10 years old in the line for Space Mountain and the guy in front of me was preaching about how all America's problems stem from the ducking eggs and Jews. Coming from a sheltered middle class British background this was the first time I'd encountered a proper full on racist. It scared the sheet out of me that this guy had so much hatred for something I didn't think mattered. Whilst at the happiest place on earth. I visited the US. Never understood suburban young kids with huge trucks that clearly do not do any manual labor. I visited. But I also have lived here my whole life. The trend in the market is that people are buying the largest cab size and the smallest bed. Now what does that tell you about people buying trucks? I asked an old lady if it's true all Americans carry guns. She smiled and pulled a revolver out of her purse. She was a nice lady. Went into a shop. They had spray on cheese. I don't think the majority of Americans here know how ridiculous that sounds to the rest of us. Spray. On. Cheese. When I first came to the US and my dad took us to a restaurant. I ordered a fish dish and when it came out I asked my dad how come the fish doesn't look like a fish. I was used to whole cooked fish so deep fried fish fillet looked really strange to me. Do you know any vikings? Asked by a nice young blonde with a straight and serious face in McDonald's. I'm from Denmark. Also. Good god Texas has a lot of fat people. I was complimented on my excellent English by a girl from Ohio. I'm Canadian. She thought we all spoke German. After moving from Africa. As a teen. I am repeatedly asked why I moved to Africa in the first place. To which I reply that I've always lived there. I am also asked. So why are you white? To which I reply. Oh my god. Karen. You can't just ask people why they are white. However. When they reply with blank stares I realize they aren't referencing mean girls. Some other questions. So Africa is one country and all the borderlines are. Like. States. Are there. You know. Buildings? You guys have memes over there. Right? Are you Australian? Was in northern New York, near Buffalo, and a waitress overheard that I was headed back to the Pacific Ocean. She asked where I was going and I said Vancouver. No honey, Vancouver is in Canada and that is on the Atlantic Ocean. 
I said Canada is from sea to sea just like America. She replied no that's not right. Only America is from sea to sea. The combination of her being absolutely sure about something and her total ignorance was surprising enough but the fact that she felt she should basically interrupt our conversation by telling me I am wrong about what ocean I live beside was weird. I visited from Canada a couple years ago. Everyone was very nice. And had the exact same mildly interested reaction to a credit card with a chip. We finally started transitioning to these in the last year or year and a half. We're a bit behind. Their drinking age is 21. WTF USA? Why do you think every other teen comedy is about having underage drinking parties? When I went to Florida I was stopped by the police for jaywalking. I protested that the road was clear so therefore safe to cross. He said I don't know how you do it in your country be here in the US we take road safety seriously. Aghast. I explained I was from England and my only knowledge of jaywalking was from Lethal Weapon 3 and that I believed it was just a made up law that they used in the movie to sass people. He chuckled and said that's a great movie. I prefer the first I agreed and said it was by far the best. After a brief chat about the entire Lethal Weapon saga he said in future make sure you use the crossings I agreed but asked in a pretty decent South African accent what if I have diplomatic immunity? He chuckled nodded his head and pointed to the crossing and said cross there. Enjoy your vacation and off he went. It was the highlight of my holiday. On a bus going into New York City from New Jersey. There was a middle aged white man on the bus. As he goes to get off the bus. I notice the tip of a used condom hanging out of the back pocket of his khaki pants. Instead of saying thank you as he is leaving the bus. He tells the young black female bus driver. Not too bad for being black. Edit. Dude was not masturbating on the bus. Nor did he have sex with the bus driver. He was sitting a few seats away from me. That would be an even more WTF moment. Which I would have included in my original post. I'm from Canada and the first thing I saw upon my arrival to Port Angeles. Washington. Which happened to be the first time I stepped foot in the States was a large spherical lady sitting in the middle of the sidewalk blocking my path to the bus terminal. Just staring at me. Another time. I was in San Diego one summer and a woman. Genuinely curious. Asked me if it was summer in Vancouver too. Edit. It was July. A couple. I went to university at Cal State Fresno. I was a country boy from Canada. When I was there the entire downtown of Fresno was boarded up and you did not go there after dark, actually in a time. And a full blown gum gang fight outside of my apartment, in Clovis, a suburb near the university. For a kid from small town Canada that was mind blowing. Was at an all you can eat buffet with a soft serve ice cream machine. As kids we thought we were being little pigs by swirling as high as we possibly could, while our parents weren't looking or they certainly would have stopped us. The guy after us grabbed a full size drink tumbler and filled it up with ice cream. No shame at all. No child like Gliat making the mother of all Sundays. I suspect now it was something he did regularly. Asked a girl in a hooker, lunge if she knew where New Zealand. My home country was. She replied asking is that the country above us? Well. It is the globe. If you get the angle right. You'll hit New Zealand eventually. There was a place called Norma's in Washington state. Somewhere rural. Anyway. It was like a shrine to George Bush. The owner was guy in the back of a menu had his face with the quote just call me Norma on the back. Best burger I ever had. Called the Jared W. Bush burger. I ate a Hershey's chocolate bar. What? The. Duck. How do you Americans actually like that? It tastes so cheap and vomity I had to spit it out. I'm Canadian and have visited the United States multiple time and have had an overall enjoyable experience on each one. I wouldn't blame this on America but I saw a fat bald middle aged man standing on the side of a Pennsylvania highway with bunny ears. I'm sure this happens in Canada too but this is the first time I've seen something like this. A universal WTF for both foreign and as citizens, the Golden Corral. Everything was submerged in liquid butter. 
the patrons were larger than some cars. First night in LA watched as a stolen cop car and a million cop cars flew past me down Hollywood BLVD at 60 miles per hour at 10 p.m. Then I turned and walked back into the Thai restaurant where I watched the fugitive get pit maneuvered and shot dead live on the news via helicopter chase cam. Dude sitting next to us was excited to tell us we had officially experienced LA. Over the top car chases. Action chase cam news. Neon lights in Hollywood. A nation restaurant that made me feel like I was in an art film. He was right. I'm from the UK. Lived in the US for about 5 years now. Few things that annoy me, you want to get a loan for a new car? There's a fee for that, on top of the interest. You want to take money out of the ATM? There's a fee for that. You want to exchange some currency? There's a fee for that, on top of the exchange spread. A product has money off? You'll have to send something to receive it, they hope you can't be bothered. Pretty much any service. Someone will try to make a few extra dollars off you. I went to Disneyland in Anaheim. And it just struck me that there were a large number of disabled people out and about enjoying the rides. I'm from India, where there is no shortage of disabled people, but it was just the sheer number of disabled people that made me extremely happy that the park was accessible to everyone. You done good America. I said to myself as I ate some horrible expensive fried thing. I later realized that most of those people were not disabled but fat people on scooters who did not feel like walking. Where do I sign up? I've told this story on reddit before. But my biggest WTF was in fall 2005. Google Earth had just come out. And my colleague at the university lab and I were looking at it. She was a blonde bombshell from San Diego. And I'm a portly Indian boy. When I showed her Mumbai. My home city. She was blown away. You have buildings? Look. There's an airport. Oh my god. You have cars? How the hell do you think we get around? I asked. Her reply still rings on my head. Not walking. Not cows. Not elephants. Not bicycles. Not horse drawn carts. She said camels. If I ever saw a camel in Mumbai I'd stop everything I'm doing and say holy shit that's a ducking camel. Railroad engineers, have you ever come across anything creepy or weird on the tracks while driving your train? I worked on the signaling for the light rail system in Pittsburgh. USA. We would do all of our testing late at night after revenue hours. Lots of wildlife around the tracks. As we were moving along at about 50 miles per hour a white tail deer jumps out onto the tracks and we clobber the poor thing. The engineer doesn't hesitate. Gets on the radio and tells central control to call Hannibal Lecter. And gives the mile post. I look at him sideways but he doesn't explain. We continue our run into the city. Turn around. And head back out the same way. As we come up on the site where we hit the deer there is a guy in full camouflage on the side of the railroad butchering the carcass. With a big pile of steaming deer guts next to the track, did I mention it was about 15 degrees Fahrenheit and snowing? Engineer gives a toot on the horn and we continue with our run. I work in Houston. As an engineer. And we usually putt around town between 10 and 20 miles per hour. Slow enough for a naked crackhead to jump out of a bush by a city park and start pleasuring herself in front of the engine. I guess she really likes trains. Edit, I also had a kid play chicken with my train when I was going about 50 miles per hour. But that was more scary than weird. I haven't hit anybody yet. But everybody says it's only a matter of time. Freight train conductor here. Wanna know what's creepy or weird? When people try to get across the tracks last second or play chicken with my 30 million pound train. You are not playing chicken with an inanimate object you're playing with me and my engineer. When you lose. And it happened far too often. I get to see your exploded carcass slipping at 150 rpms off the track and deal with the overwhelming feeling of guilt. Please don't try to beat a train. Edit. A few words. One time I went skinny dipping with some friends then we all stood next to the track naked as a train went by. Hopefully it brightened the engineer's day. Depends on what gender you are I'm sure. 
A large part of my family works for the railroad and here is what I've heard. Not all creepy but scary. 1. My dad. Who is a no-nonsense 6 foot 6 inch man. Came home one night after a derailment and was white as a sheet. He told my mom he met a man walking away from the derailment. Which was in the middle of the woods. He didn't think it was too weird because some people check out wrecks and derailments. Anyway. My dad gets to the derailment and says hey to my uncle. The cause of the derailment was a truck that had been hit and then pushed by the engine. Now. None of this is weird until my dad sees the man in the truck. It looked like a beat up version of the man he met on the way to the derailment. He got the man's driver's license when the sheriff's deputy showed up. The way my uncle put it was your dad almost passed out and had to sit down. He didn't say why because you don't do that around railroad men. 2. My uncle was walking the rails, which you do to prevent derailments and such, and he had to pee. So he went into some woods. He said he walked up onto what he was sure was some kind of animal sacrifice weird sheet. He called the other workers to see it and they were very creeped out. They just left and tried to make a joke of it. 3. The number of drunk hobos homeless people who pass out on the rails is oddly high. 4. Also. A hobo was found dead in a hooper car, the kind that are open and typically hold grain. They figured since it was the summer he wanted more air circulation and hopped in that one. Well. The car was filled and no one really looks in it. It wasn't figured out until the car was unloaded. Locomotive engineer from the northeast us here with 15 years service. Aside from the dead animals I think finding a body that was hit by a previous train might have been the creepiest. I've hit a few cars and people before but I never had to go back and look, that's the conductor's job. The person we found wasn't really identifiable as a human being. Just a pile of meat. What gave it away were the scraps of clothing mixed into the pile. As far as weird things. There are a few people out there that are really in love with trains. You can use your imagination as to what these grown men do in the middle of nowhere at 2am went by a few movie shoots. Biggest one was the first Transformers movie. The scene where Bumblebee gets caught. A lot of movies are shot in that area by the first street bridge in LA. Pretty sure there is a porn studio not far from there too. There is a nudist colony on one run where an old guy would always come out and wave at the trains. Knew we were coming since there were road crossings that we had to whistle for. Got mooned by some guys on a golf course. Not pretty. I'm a conductor so I'm the guy that sits directly to the left of the engineer. I haven't been doing it for too long yet so I probably haven't seen the amount of stuff a qualified engineer has. My first week as a trainee on the job we came across a dead pony next to the tracks that must have been hit only a few hours earlier. The next morning going back the other way we passed by it again and it looked like what you would expect to see on a Discovery Channel show. Scavengers had gotten to it that night and it was maybe half a pony at this point. Nature is pretty rad. There is a routine here in Tokyo to deal with people on the rails. The government even charges a fee to the family of suicidal guys. Given they interrupted the traffic. I'm not a train engineer per se. But I've spent lots of years working on the signals of the east coast. I'd say one of the most interesting things I've seen are the villages of people that really pop up in the right spots. Tons of people. Dogs. Homeless villages with friendly people who aren't afraid or embarrassed ever at all. Also. In some mountain towns of West Virginia. There are some unique folks with tracks running through their properties. Up in the coal mines of Wyoming they have what rail crews call the Golden Arches. It's just a yellow painted framework that has speakers on it that the MT coal trains pass through. A warning is played on repeat saying in Spanish and English danger. Get out. This car is about to be loaded. Loaded coal cars get dumped at power plant pits where huge augers break it up. I guess more than a few poor souls have been augered up accidentally after being cover up with coal. My dad was one for a while. He was working at a station one day and there was a woman crying on one of the benches. A few of the staff asked if she was okay or needed help. But she completely ignored them. Next thing they knew. She threw herself in front of one of the express trains. 
they were finding pieces of her as far as the next station along. Hey. I'm an engineer on a class 1 on the west coast. 9 plus years of seniority. With 7 being as an engineer. Have never seen anything creepy or mysterious though. But have hit plenty of unfortunate animals. And trespassing incidents are as sky high as ever. Also. Train riders may be decent sometimes. But a lot of them are criminals and some are very dangerous. Every so often a story pops up where some suburban kid decides to ride the rails and ends up dead. It's not a safe environment for anyone. So. Nothing ghostly or mysterious to report but please make sure you stay well clear of the tracks. We do not like hitting people. We don't sign you out to watch people die and a lot of co-workers have a degree of PTSD afterwards. My brother was a lifeguard and used to walk to work across several train tracks. One day. A train was stopped on one of the tracks and my brother saw a figure lying prostrate next to the train in a pool of blood. It turns out the guy had tried to crawl underneath the train while it was stopped only to have the train start moving while he was underneath it. The guy must have been about 60 years old. The train had crushed one of his legs. Being a lifeguard. My brother made a tourniquet. Call 911. ETC. The man survived. But his leg had to be amputated. The paramedics said that he would have died within the hour from blood loss if my brother hadn't been there. My first time on a train I was traveling in Germany with my grandfather. And he noticed and pointed out to me that we were riding on the wrong tracks. We were northbound on the southern track. Our curiosity got the better of us when I pointed out that there were some guys in bright yellow vests doing some kind of maintenance. And then we noticed that there was blood and meat all shredded up on the tracks. We were going really slow cause of the workers. And we watched intently and tried to figure out what kind of animal it had been. But no hooves or fur were discernible. Then we went quite a distance without seeing many chunks. But the tracks were still bloody. Then there it was. A blue dress. Conductor here. One time in the middle of the night in the middle of winter, 10 degrees and a foot of snow on the ground, my train went into emergency. I had to walk the length of the train to see what the problem was. The train was right in the middle of a very small town. As I'm walking by one of the houses on the outskirts of this town I see a guy standing in the driveway about 50 feet from me wearing a trench coat and a sock hat type thing. The first thing that struck me as odd is that it was way too cold to be wearing just a trench coat. I shine my lantern on the guy. Wave. And say hi. Nothing. The guy doesn't even move. I continue walking past the guy to the end the train while looking back very often. I get to the end. Turn around and head back. I get back to the house where this guy is standing and he is still there in the same place in the same position. I don't even say anything this time. I just speed walk back to the head of the train. The next day I'm taking a train back home during the day. I'm paying special attention to this house as we go by it. There is nothing there. The drive isn't shuffled. Nothing is there that could have been mistaken for a guy in a trench coat. I have since been by this house dozens of times and I have never seen a car parked there. Or a light on or anything at all. TLER saw a scary guy in a trench coat standing in the driveway of an abandoned house at 3 in the morning in the middle of winter. Not a train engineer. But once as a kid, 13-14, I was forgotten at a skating rink lock-in. About 8am the owner said that she had to go so I took off walking towards home. It was about 12 miles away. After about a mile. I knew I could get on the tracks and it would take me right in front of my house. I was walking when I heard a train was coming in the distance. I moved off about 30 feet. As it approached. To the side away from the tracks. I witnessed a dog walk up to the tracks and lay its head flat on one of the tracks. As the train was getting closer I called for the dog. I was about 50 feet away. It did not respond. I am sure the conductor did not see it but it severed the dog's head away from the body. I was totally freaked out. I cried for about an hour. Then I decided to bury the dog with the rocks beside the tracks. I still had about 3 hours before I would arrive home walking. I thought for a moment that this was this was a sign that I should do the same. As I walked. 
I came to the conclusion that I witnessed this so I would not ever take my own life. Since it was very disturbing to those left to witness. I've told this story to others since and one time a vet tech told me that the dog must have known it was sick. When I got home and the others woke up. I told them about what I had witnessed and they accused me of making it up since they forgot me. It stuck with me for a long time. Not a railroad engineer. But the last time I went on a train. It was from Seattle to California. On the second night. We suddenly stopped and were waiting for a while. Apparently there had been a naked woman running along the train track and laid down and let the train go over her. I looked out the window after we stopped and heard the news. Well sure enough she was outside. Looking right at me. I was 10 and I was scared as duck. I'm not a train engineer. But one time in grade school we were on a school trip and a railroad ran parallel to the road our bus was on. Our school bus ended up going the same speed and direction as a train and the conductors opened their window and yelled slurs at us. Fourth grade was fun. Yeah this is pretty unrelated to what OP is asking but it's one of the most relevant things in this thread so far. Bit late to the party but here we go. Probably the strangest most messed up thing would be the time we hit a flock of sheep. At line speed, 110 kph or about 70 miles per hour. No idea how they got there. Guess the fence fell over or the gate was left open but the first I saw of them was what appeared to be long grass covering the tracks ahead. A second later we realize they are sheep so start leaning on the whistle. A matter of seconds after that and we're on top of them. Can't forget the awful. Continuous noise it made nor can I unsee the bits of wool and guts on flicking up onto the windscreen. The smell itself was horrendous. Especially once the heat of dead sheep started cooking itself on hot traction motors underneath. We pulled up at the next crossing loop to cross another train so we got out and viewed the damage. I used to have photos but that phone has since died. Frequent Amtrak rider here. I've seen more Texas red eyes and bare asses than some internet but porn fetishists. Also some pretty obvious meth labs. Homeless bridge dwellers don't wipe and rich dude bros and wood girls along waterfronts have some very white cottage cheese asses. Oh and homeless camps. It's like the ducking Great Depression but the government won't admit it. This happened on the L train in Chicago. I got on the Orange Line train heading north from Halstead. The train car was empty except for a passed out hobo in the corner. The next stop this weird looking old guy gets on. Lock size with me as soon as he enters and. Despite having a completely empty car's worth of seats to choose from. Sits down directly behind me. He never breaks eye contact as he does. And he had some of the most sunken blue eyes I had ever seen. He rides behind me for a few stops while other people file in and out. The whole time I can feel him burning a hole in the back of my head. I get off at transfer station. And I watch as the doors close behind me. Creepy old guy still sitting in his seat. Still gazing into my eyes as the train pulls away. I ran through the station to my next train. And after riding it for several stops. I get out and look around for my friend who said she would meet me at the platform. As the people dissipated from the station and I looked for my friend. I realized the same guy from the train I had been on earlier. The same one that I saw pull away with him still on it. Was at the end of the platform and still staring intensely at me. I froze. Felt confusion slowly fade to horror and booked it out of there. Told my friend and she was like ah, okay.